Notice that what we have here is that the indefinite integral dx over the square root of 1 plus x squared is inverse hyperbolic sine x plus a constant. Now, what does this mean, say, geometrically? Suppose we take the curve y equals 1 over the square root of 1 plus x squared. Without beating this thing to death, it should be fairly straightforward at this stage of the game that the graph of this function can be obtained, and it looks something like this. In fact, intuitively notice that y will be maximum when my denominator is smallest. My denominator is smallest when x is 0. So the maximum value of y occurs when x is 0, at which case y is 1. Also, if I replace x by minus x, I don't change the function, and therefore the graph, it's an even function, the graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis, etc. At any rate, I have a picture like this. And now suppose I want to find the area of the region R, where R is bounded above by this curve, below by the x-axis, on the left by the y-axis, and on the right by the line x equals t. The area of the region R, which is a function of t, is given by what? the definite integral from 0 to t dx over the square root of 1 plus x squared. The point is, I could, as we talked about in the previous block, try to evaluate this as the limit of a sum, in other words, an infinite sum, and go through all sorts of work to try to do this thing. But the first fundamental theorem tells us in this particular case that this particular area just turns out to be the inverse hyperbolic sine of t. In other words, notice that a non-trigonometric region has as its answer an inverse hyperbolic trigonometric function. Or if you want this thing more specifically, for example, notice that if you want the area of this region from 0 to 1, from 0 to 1, the answer to this problem just would have been the inverse hyperbolic sine of 1. In other words, e to the 1 minus e to the minus 1 over 2. In other words, notice how E sneaks in to a problem which basically doesn't seem to have any relationship to E. By the way, as a very brief aside for what it's worth, it's rather interesting to observe that this last equation that we've written down gives a rather interesting definition of the inverse hyperbolic sign without having to refer to a hyperbola or anything trigonometric. In other words, notice that the inverse hyperbolic sign can be defined as an integral, which is what we've really done over here. But again, that's just an aside. The main point that I wanted us to get a hold of over here was the fact that you solve non-hyperbolic functions conveniently if we have mastered the hyperbolic function.